This episode of Town of Football is sponsored by Thrive Fantasy. Thrive Fantasy is a daily fantasy sports and esports app for player props. We'll explain much more throughout the episode, but use the promo code T2F when you sign up today or click the link in the description and you will receive an instant match of up to $50 on your first deposit. Download the app on the App Store or Play Store. It is Super Bowl week. Super Bowl 55 this Sunday between the Kansas City Chiefs and the Tampa Bay Buccaneers in Tampa, Florida. We'll be previewing the big game leading up to this Sunday, as well as getting you caught up with everything going around the NFL prior to this week's matchup on a brand new episode of Time to Football. Hello, everyone. Thank you guys for joining us. My name is Hassan Khan, the host of this show. If you guys noticed there's no episode last week, you are correct. We actually spend that time coming out with Super Bowl content, including the Bucks hype video and the Chiefs hype video, which has been getting a lot of great reviews, as well as interviewing players in Super Bowl week as well, which we're going to explain in just a second, which is actually the reason why I'm so dressed up is because in between this podcast, I'm interviewing players over Zoom because of COVID-19 protocols. You can't interview them in a person. On this podcast, I don't care how I look. I wore a backwards hat. I wore a t-shirt. Actually, as a matter of fact, I never wore pants on the show. And this table is see-through, so I'm very glad that we only have one camera angle because if we had another one, you would see some stuff that you would not like to see. So that's why I'm dressed up because I want to look nice in front of these players. I want to address that real real quick because a lot of people have been asking me and, and commenting, how did you get access to these players and the opportunity to reach out to them and get in touch with them? So it all started a couple years ago, Super Bowl 53 with the Rams and the Patriots. I just thought, okay, it's in Atlanta, which is where we're based out of. I can just drive down there to State Farm Arena and interview these players for media day. What are the odds of me doing that? Let's get credential. Let's just try my luck. And so I go I go ahead and submit my information, submit my YouTube channel to the NFL and email them. And they said a day before, they always do this every year, a day before. That's when you find out you have credentials. A day before they say, okay, you're good. And so I was excited. I was gathering a crew together. And we were able to interview these players. And then we've been doing it every year since then. So last year, we went down to Miami and got to interview the 49ers and the Chiefs as well. And this year, like I said, COVID-19, we wanted to go down to Tampa, plan a whole trip. But because of COVID-19, we have to do this all over Zoom, which is actually really, really tough, really tough to get a question in with these guys. I mean, it's the way it works is you have 45 minutes. You have access throughout the whole entire week, but every day there's a span of uh, 30 to 45 minutes for each team, and they choose different players, eight or 10 different players every day that you have access to interview uh, in the span of this 45 minutes. So they're like, okay, in this Zoom room, you have Ndamukong Su, and this one you have Tom Brady, and this one Mike Evans, this one Chris Godwin, and you just have to jump around from room to room, uh, press a button. And just wait and hope that the moderator calls on you so that you can ask that player that question. In each room, you can't see how many other people are in that room. So you can't be like, oh, there's 30 people in this room. My chances of getting this question answered by Chris Godwin, it's more than likely not going to happen. I'm just going to go ahead and jump over to maybe Harrison Butker, uh, you know, a lesser known player, not that big of a name. But you can't see how many people are in this room. So all you can do is just press a button and just wait and hope that a moderator calls on you. And there's been times that you go 45 minutes sitting in the same room, the same Zoom room, and you'll never get your name called ever. It happened yesterday with Le'Veon Bell. It happened uh, the other day as well with Cameron Brait. Now we got lucky with Jason Pierre-Paul. Harrison Butker, Clyde edwards Lair, and hopefully throughout the week, we'll be interviewing many more players that we'll be able to uh, put up on this channel, but my goodness, it's tough. And that is what, actually why I don't want to be a journalist or a reporter or, or, or get these breaking news type, you know, hot mic quotes from these players because it is cutthroat. It is a cutthroat industry. I want to be an entertainer, an analyst, a guy that gives opinions, a podcaster after the news already breaks out and give my opinion on it rather than fight and claw other reporters and other peers and step over whoever needs to be stepped on so that you can go ahead and get that hot quote from that player, annoy the player in the process as well. Granted, I know it's people's jobs. I know this is your livelihood. I get it. But there are so many reporters that do that. It's ridiculous. Just from the past three years that I've been uh, able to interview these 
uh, players as well. People will cut in line uh, in the process as well. Cool story, actually not cool story, just a memory I want to share. Chris Hogan, the wide receiver of the Patriots at the time, Super Bowl 53, I was waiting in line forever to talk to him. Not a lot of people around him. And then when the opportunity comes for me to go up and talk to him, these two guys with a Boston radio show show up and with their Boston accents and go like, hey, Chris, how's it feel to be a, uh, the most the best looking guy on this team besides Tom Brady? And ask him dumb questions. They cut in line and they'll, they'll do anything to, to make sure that their show is taken care of and they don't care about their peers. Uh, and then last year, oh my gosh, I got to tell you about this woman. Okay. Entertainment Tonight, you know, the the uh, drama, gossip, they gossip about celebrities pretty much. Entertainment Tonight somehow, someway got credentialed to ask players questions. So this woman, same woman, every year, cuts in line. I think we have video footage. I was waiting in line to talk to Tyreek Hill last week, uh, if we can pull it up. If we don't have that, then uh, we won't show it. But I was waiting in line to talk to Tyreek Hill last year, and I was coming up. It was my time, it was my turn, and then the same instance, like it happened with Chris Hogan, this woman from Entertainment Tonight comes up, cuts you in line, starts to ask Tyreek Hill a question. I would be okay with it. Okay, it's fine. I could take it. It's kind of a douchey move, but it's okay. But the reason I can remember this so well is because the questions that she was asking was like, who was the last NFL player to play or be on The Bachelorette? Or who's playing the halftime show this weekend for the Super Bowl? It's just questions that are just, you know, yeah, you get a fun answer out of these these players and it's cool to watch for like 15 30 seconds to get that cool quote out of them and 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 laugh and have a good time but you're wasting the time of other people that want to ask football related questions that are actually related to their their careers to the big game to their teammates that actually matter and are actually relevant so uh and it happened again two different times uh yesterday actually I was talking to or waiting to talk to Chris Godwin this woman from Entertainment Tonight shows up, same woman, asks him the same questions. And then I was like, all right, well, I'm not going to get a chance with Chris Godwin. I left that room, went into the room with Rob Gronkowski, went in to ask him a question. Same woman, Entertainment Tonight. So Entertainment Tonight, I don't like your shtick, all right? Leave everyone alone and give everyone else their respectable time. Got it? Anyways, so... To explain, that's what it goes, what goes on with Super Bowl, and, and this year especially, you have to interview them over Zoom as well. So uh, it's actually a pretty cool opportunity. I have fun, and I'm very, very grateful uh, for the opportunity, whether it be one player that I interview or 100. It doesn't matter. I'm very, very grateful. Let's transition now over to NFL news going around the league leading into Super Bowl Sunday. Probably the biggest news coming out of the NFL is the swap and exchange of quarterbacks between two NFC franchises. The Los Angeles Rams and the Detroit Lions have swapped their quarterbacks, Matthew Stafford and Jared Goff, alongside uh, some draft picks as well. We're going to discuss all of that much more later on in the podcast. We've got a whole segment dedicated to that, but I just want to touch base on that real quick. But speaking of another quarterback controversy, we've got Deshaun Watson. We all know that he's been in the uh, hunt for finding a new team, and right now his preferred team is the New York Jets. He has a lot of respect for Robert Sala, and him as a head coach actually was upset that the Houston Texans did not interview Robert Sala. So the Dolphins, the Falcons, the Panthers, all these teams are somewhat interested, or there have been rumors of them acquiring Deshaun Watson. But Watson to the New York Jets? Actually sounds pretty cool. What are your chances of that happening? I don't know. Let's just see what happens with Sean Watson uh, and the Houston Texans. Sean Payton, speaking of another quarterback, uh, you know, controversy or unknown, if you want to call it that. Sean Payton of the New Orleans Saints, the head coach, unsure if Drew Brees is going to retire just yet, but it's a given now that Sean Payton has come out and said that he has big interest in Jameis Winston returning. So he's going to be an unrestricted free agent coming up this offseason. Sean Payton has already come out and said that he loves his leadership. He loves his uh, ability, his physical ability. And he would love to have Jameis Winston back and have the chance to compete for the starting quarterback position in 2021. Cole Beasley, the Bills wide receiver. This is news that actually came out a, a week ago, but I thought it was pretty cool to mention. Cole Beasley played through a broken fibula towards the end of the season. He came out and said that, hey, my fibula is broken, but I did not want to tell anyone about it because I didn't want anyone to shut me down and end my season and end my chances of playing uh, for what could have been a Super Bowl championship 
Cole Beasley, that's a lot of toughness to play with that broken fibula. What a guy uh, going through that. The Falcons have no plans in trading Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. This is news that just came out a couple weeks ago or a couple days ago. The Falcons have come out and said, as of right now, according to head coach Arthur Smith, he has a lot of respect for Matt Ryan and Julio Jones. No plans, no uh, sort of trade talks going around going around so far for Matt Ryan and Julio Jones to be dealt. It's looking like that going into 2021, Ryan and Julio are going to be their starting uh, quarterback and wide receiver. What are your thoughts on that? Do you feel like that the Falcons should just go on and get rid of them and just free up a lot of cap space and just move on with the future? Uh, a lot of people believe so, but Arthur Smith believes that they can be productive in that Falcons offense. Ryan Fitzpatrick wants to play his 17th season, whether that be with the Miami Dolphins or moving forward, because the last two years with the Dolphins have lit another fire inside of him. So 17th season has been playing since 2005 when he was drafted late uh, by what was the St. Louis Rams. He's going to move on to what we expect to be a, another team because Brian Flores and the Dolphins head brass is just going to move forward with Tua Tagovailoa. Fitzpatrick will find another team, whether he's going to be a starter or not, I don't know. But uh, if last year proved anything, he is capable of playing in the NFL. So Fitzpatrick has another season at least inside of him. Robert Sala, if we want to talk about Deshaun Watson and Robert Sala, he is non-committal on Sam Darnold as the starting quarterback. When asked about the uh, by the press or the media whether Sam Darnold is going to be the quarterback going into 2021, hasn't really said anything. He believes that uh, Sam Darnold, the future for him, he loves his talent. He gives him high praise, and he's on the record of saying that he's an unbelievable uh, quarterback, but there's no guarantee that he's going to be the starting quarterback. Do you feel like that Sam, Sam Darnold should be the quarterback, or should they bring in another guy like Deshaun Watson to compete for that starting job? The Tampa Bay Buccaneers, who play in their home stadium for Super Bowl 55, will not be firing the cannons during the Super Bowl. So the only time uh, that they'll be firing the cannons, and what that means is in the end zone of uh, Ramey James Stadium, there's a whole pirate ship, and every time they score a touchdown or a big play, they fire these cannons uh, to indicate, you know, the fans to cheer and all that kind of sort of stuff. But they don't want to show favoritism, even though it is in their home stadium. They want to be as unbiased as possible. So the only time that they're going to shoot the cannons off is during the introduction when the team runs out, runs out on the field. Other than that, they're just going to be unbiased for the Chiefs, for the Bucks. Those cannons will not go off when a touchdown is scored. And the last little bit of news that we want to share with you, this just came out. Carson Wentz has been acquired about by other NFL teams. Who those teams are, we don't know. The Philadelphia Eagles have come out and said that they have no plans and no interest of trading Carson Wentz anytime soon. However, if you look at other NFL teams around the league, such as the Indianapolis Colts, who people believe that's going to be the number one spot for Carson Wentz, you've got the Washington football team, all these, all these other teams inquiring about Carson Wentz being their potential starting quarterback. Which team is going to land Carson Wentz? And do you feel like the Philadelphia Eagles are going to actually listen to these trade talks and trade them away for what could be, we expect to be, at least a second round or first round pick? But those are your news um, and notes around the NFL going into Super Bowl weekend. We're going to get into the Super Bowl matchup Super Bowl 55 between the Chiefs and the Buccaneers preview that give our analysis of that as well as talking about Matthew Stafford and Jared Goff that more in depth but first before we get into that we want to send a big thank you to Thrive Fantasy Football come prop up on Thrive Fantasy for the big game Thrive Fantasy is a daily fantasy sports and esports app for player props with Thrive, you can eliminate the countless hours of research and focus on only the top-tier athletes that have the biggest impact on the game. Choose 10 out of the 20 available player props to build your lineup. Each prop is assigned a fantasy value or both over and the under based on how likely it is to hit. Thrive has a free $1,000 contest and over $30,000 in guaranteed prizes for the big game. So this is how it works. You pretty much choose your lineup for this weekend for Super Bowl Sunday. If you sign up today, you can also get a discount. I'll explain that in a little bit. But how it works is you choose the over and under on each player. For instance, for Tom Brady, do you believe that he's going to throw for over or under 284 yards? For Patrick Mahomes, with passing yards and rushing yards combined, total yards, do you think he's going to be over or under 320 yards? 
So many more players and so many more options for you guys to choose from. And if you get every single one of these players correct, you win some big prizes. And here at Time to Football, we are giving you a special discount if you were to sign up today for Thrive Fantasy Football. Use the promo code T2F or click that link in the description and the promo code will automatically be assigned. When you sign up today and you will receive an instant match of up to $50 on your first deposit, you put in 20 bucks minimum and you get 20 bucks out of it. You put in 30 bucks, get 30 bucks, 50 bucks, get 50 bucks. It's a great deal that you want to take advantage of ahead of Super Bowl Sunday. Download Thrive Fantasy on the App Store or Play Store or by visiting their website, www.thrivefantasy.com. Sign up and prop up today. The final game of the 2020 season, Super Bowl 55, the Kansas City Chiefs versus the hometown favorites, the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. This is the first Super Bowl where both quarterbacks have won a Super Bowl MVP and NFL MVP award as well. Patrick Mahomes could join Tom Brady as the only two quarterbacks to win two Super Bowls in their first four seasons. Great matchup that we've got. And a lot of people predicted this to be their preseason matchup as well between the Chiefs and the Buccaneers. Given that the Chiefs, their journey, if we want to talk about them first, second straight Super Bowl appearance would have been third. I 100% honestly believe that if the Chiefs went to the Super Bowl, in 2018, that they would have won and they would have beat the Rams and now they'd be playing for what would have been the third straight Super Bowl championship. Instead, they lost to Tom Brady and the New England Patriots at that time. The game went into overtime. There was a pre-snap penalty that uh, kept the Patriots on the field in overtime and, and eventually they were able to score, go on to the Super Bowl, win it all. Patrick Mahomes never had a chance at the ball in overtime. But the Chiefs are playing for their second straight Super Bowl and this could be the meaning of a next uh, big dynasty after the New England Patriots dynasty has what we presume to have ended at this point. So the Chiefs are looking great with Patrick Mahomes. People believe that he's going to pass Tom Brady eventually in his legacy. If he were to stop Tom Brady and winning his seventh Super Bowl and Mahomes were to win his second Super Bowl, more than likely it's possible that we could be talking about the Chiefs being this big dynasty following Bill Belichick and the Patriots Instead, you're going to be talking about Andy Reid and the Chiefs for years to come. For the Buccaneers, they started off 7-5. and five. Listen, in the preseason, it, it, we have to go back to that. Tom Brady signed in the offseason. All of these big stars come into the, into the mix when Tom Brady signs. Leonard Fournette wants to sign after he gets released by the Jaguars. Antonio Brown later on in the season wants to sign and play with Tom Brady. So all these players and all these stars want to play for Tampa Bay. But they started off 7-5 and five, and it looked like that this season would have been a little bit of a disappointment given all the hype that you had going into the 2020 season. Well, that game against the Chiefs is what got them to 7-5. and five. Tony Romo makes an unbelievable prediction like he always does and says that the Chiefs and the Buccaneers are going to play in the Super Bowl. 7-5, and five, have that bye week after the Chiefs lost, and then all of a sudden never lost a game since. Goes 11-5, and five, wins out in the postseason on the road, and now they're playing at home in their stadium for Super Bowl 55. Let's take a look at some team comparisons to kind of break down the matchup and kind of give you guys a feel of where each team stands as far as how good their offense and their defense are. Let's start off with the Kansas City Chiefs. Looking at their offense to start off with, they're ranked first in pass offense, 16th in the run. Sixth in the NFL in points per game, 14th if you want to talk about pass defense, and then 21st in rush defense. So their defense is kind of mediocre. Their offense has been uh, the bread and butter of this Super Bowl appearance. For the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, talk about them. Their offense right behind the Kansas City Chiefs as far as pass offense. The Chiefs are ranked first. The Bucs are ranked second. But it's a little lopsided when you talk about the pass offense versus the rush offense. Second in pass but 28th in rush offense. They've got to get Ronald Jones and Leonard Fournette their healthy amount of carries and get the ball moving. Points per game, second in the NFL, much better than the Chiefs. Pass defense, this is where it's been lacking for the Buccaneers and has been uh, attributed to the reason why they've been 7-5 and because of their 21st ranked pass defense and then the rush defense. No question about it. Their rush defense, they do not need to be concerned about that with one of the better defensive lines in the NFL with Jason Pierre-Paul, Ndamukong Su, and all those good guys 
uh, on that defensive line, first in the NFL. Let's look at the comparison between the two quarterbacks that are playing. You've got the what people label as the GOAT versus the kid, Tom Brady versus Patrick Mahomes. Talking about, uh, talking about Mahomes, passing yards, 4,700 yards passing. Listen, before I read all of Mahomes' stats, these are all based off of 15 games that he started this season, did not play in Week 16. 38 passing touchdowns to only six interceptions. 66% of his passes completed, 108.2 quarterback rating, as opposed to Tom Brady, 4,600 yards passing, 40 touchdowns to 12 interceptions, 65.7 passes up of his passes completed, and 102.2 quarterback rating. We expect this to be a pass-heavy game. We don't expect anything less than that. We expect them to go back and forth, and what matters in a pass-heavy game are your weapons. Looking at the wide receiver comparison, if you want to talk about the big targets that each of these players have, their number one targets, Mahomes and Brady... You've got Tyreek Hill and Mike Evans, the wide receivers of each respected team. For the Chiefs, Tyreek Hill, 87 receptions, 1,200 yards receiving, 15 touchdowns, 14.7 yards per reception, and 64.7% uh, catch percentage, meaning that the targets versus the receptions that he had, he caught 64% of them. Versus Mike Evans, who is a little bit lower than Tyreek Hill as far as uh, statistics go. 70 receptions, 1,006 yards receiving, 13 touchdowns, 14.4 yards per reception, and then catch percentage, 64.2. Now, even though his stats might be a little bit lower than Tyreek Hill, that could be attributed to a lot of things. As far as Brady liking to spread the ball around a lot, a lot of good targets like Antonio Brown, who stepped it up late in the season. Chris Godwin as well. Rob Gronkowski, Cameron Brait now emerging as that tight end one. For Tyreek Hill, it's pretty much him at the wide receiver position. Yeah, you've got Travis Kelsey to kind of split targets with, but it's pretty much just Hill and Kelsey at that point. But both of them, great red zone targets if you want to talk about Mike Evans, especially, I believe in the last five, six, seven years, has been targeted more than any other player in the red zone. Mike Evans has, so a great red zone target on top of that. What are the keys to victory for each team? Because you got to talk about how can each team pick up a victory and win the Super Bowl. Let's start off with the Kansas City Chiefs. Their keys to victory. First off, zone blitz often. So for you guys that play a lot of Madden, that play defense, a lot of you guys like to zone blitz because it works a lot. And in real life against Tom Brady, it more so can work. So the defense, uh, when they ever play zone defense, the reason they play it is because it gives a quarterback uh, more time in the pocket to really read the zone and see where each of the defenders are to try to find that open window so they can uh, throw the ball into that open window. So if you apply a lot of pressure on Tom Brady as far as uh, giving him the ball in his hands for so long and you have him in the pocket for so long and you send a blitz as well, all of a sudden that's going to pressure Tom Brady and he's going to have to throw it out quick meaning that the zone defense could intercept the ball, could cause a turnover, fumble, whatever it may be. But zone blitz is what the New York Giants have used uh, when they won against Tom Brady in the Super Bowl in 2007 and 2011. Uh, the second key to victory for the Kansas City Chiefs, as far as the offense goes, the pass-run ratio has to be at least 60 to 40. So what does that mean? That means you're going to have to pass the ball a lot. This defense is the best team in the NFL against the run. Clyde edwards Lair, Le'Veon Bell, great talents. Darrell Williams as well has very, been very underrated. But you're not really going to do much against the best run defense in the NFL. So you're going to have to pass the ball a lot, at least a 60 to 40% share. I wouldn't be surprised if you make it more 70 to 30. And that be uh, your game plan and give the ball to Patrick Mahomes and give it to him to lead your team to victory. As far as the Tampa Bay Buccaneers, what are their keys to victory? Number one, you have to prioritize Travis Kelsey guarding him over Tyreek Hill. You can't let Tyreek Hill burn you. I understand he got 200 yards and uh, three touchdowns in that game that they had against the Buccaneers in week 12. But if you prioritize Travis Kelsey, that will make a big difference because what Patrick Mahomes likes to do on third and 10, third and 15, when the moment counts, when it matters the most in the middle of the field, Travis Kelsey is his go-to guy to try to get that yardage and try to get that first down. If you try to double cover Travis Kelsey, you're going to eliminate that threat and you're going to have to force the ball to other targets such as 
Tyreek Hill, and then it's a big drop off from there with Miko Hardman and other receivers that they have. So if you prioritize covering Travis Kelsey, he's a silent assassin. He's going to rack up yards and rack up receptions slowly and surely. And then all of a sudden, he has eight receptions for 100 yards and a touchdown. You cannot let that happen. Cover Travis Kelsey. And the number two, another defensive key to victory, force Patrick Mahomes to make quick throws. That's what matters. We talked about Travis, uh, Tom Brady. Try to make him throw some quick throws as well. Apply that pressure. The best way to make him throw the ball out quick is a blitz. That would be your best option. With that defensive line, you don't have to be worried about that. But they beat the Packers. 14 points came off of turnovers in that victory against the Packers. And that was because they blitzed Aaron Rodgers and caused him to throw the ball out quick. He had nowhere to throw it, had to throw incomplete passes, had to throw the ball away. Get the ball out of Patrick Mahomes' hands, and that's to blitz Patrick Mahomes and make him throw some quick throws and get that ball out of there pretty quick. But those are the keys to victory for each team. So what we like to do with each of these game previews, we like to ask polls on Instagram. Get your thoughts. Ask you, the Town of Football fans, who do you believe is going to win the Super Bowl? The Chiefs or the Buccaneers? We came out with this poll. This poll is still open by the time that you premiere this video or this podcast on YouTube on Thursday night. So go ahead and go to Instagram at Time to Football and vote if you want to. But as of right now, with the poll being up for a few hours, who do the fans believe is going to win the Super Bowl? The results. People believe that the Chiefs have a 49% chance of winning and the Buccaneers, 51%. So it's pretty close, 51 to 49 in favor of the Bucs. Listen, like I said, this poll is just going to keep on going back and forth, and it's going to be close, we assume, all day long. So if you're watching this podcast in time as it premieres, go ahead and vote for your favorite team or who you guys believe is going to win this game. But it, from what people say, this is going to be a very, very close game, and it's going to be exciting, which we expect as well. We expect this game to come down to the wire, but 49% of you believe that it's the Chiefs that's going to win, but 51 believe that the Buccaneers are going to win a Super Bowl in their home stadium, and Tom Brady is going to win yet again another Super Bowl, his seventh Super Bowl in his already remarkable career. Leave your thoughts and leave your comments down below. What are your predictions as far as who do you think is going to win the game, but also Super Bowl MVP? Is it going to be Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, or is it going to be a non-quarterback, maybe even a defensive player as well? Leave your comments, leave your thoughts, leave your opinions, and interact with us down below. Moving on to our final topic for this week's episode. We want to talk about this because we didn't have an opportunity to talk about this last week. This came out Saturday night. Probably the biggest news around the NFL outside of the Super Bowl. Matthew Stafford and Jared Goff have been traded. They've swapped team, exchanged franchises. So Jared Goff is now a Detroit Lion. Matthew Stafford now an L.A. Ram. How did this happen? Let's first start off with uh, what they gave up, what each team gave up. So the Lions give up Matthew Stafford. Jared Goff has been traded to the Lions as well as a first-round pick, two first-round picks on top of that, and a third-rounder. So the Rams play, paid a pretty big bargain to acquire Matthew Stafford, which you would think to yourself, all right, Stafford, yeah, physically he might be more talented than Jared Goff, but is it really that big of a difference between the talent level that you would give up two first-round picks, a third-rounder, and another player on top of that to the Detroit Lions in exchange for Matthew Stafford? I don't know what their thinking was. Maybe the market was just tough and a lot of teams were interested in Matthew Stafford. As a matter of fact, uh, if we want to talk about that, Carolina was one of those teams. It's come out that Carolina wanted to trade and acquire for Matthew Stafford, but they were willing to pay the same amount of price for Matthew Stafford. Uh, the Rams, it seemed like at the end, wanted to pay a little bit more to acquire him. Let's talk about the stat line for the 2020 season for each of these quarterbacks. Stafford, 4,084 yards passing, 26 passing touchdowns, 10 interceptions. Pretty solid for Stafford. Goff, 3,900 yards passing, 20 passing touchdowns, 13 interceptions. Not so much for Goff, but he's only two seasons removed from that 32 yard or that 32 passing touchdown season that he had that led the Rams to the Super Bowl. So not that far off as far as Jared Goff goes, as far as talent. Could get back to that level. It remains to be seen. McVay and Stafford already excited about this opportunity. They celebrated the next day in Mexico. But the Colts, the 49ers, we mentioned Carolina, Washington football team as well, were also interested in acquiring Matthew Stafford. The Rams, at the end of the day, paid the biggest bargain, like we said, and acquired Stafford at the end of the day. 
He was interested, Matthew Stafford was, in playing for any one of those teams except for New England. He came out and said, according to multiple sources, that he does not want to play with the New England Patriots. You would think to yourself for a guy that had a lot of success with Tom Brady, built this dynasty, and if you bring in a great quarterback like Stafford, couldn't you get back to the level of success that you had? Well, it's come out and said that Stafford hates cold weather. He does not want to play in a cold weather environment. This is true, actually. I'm not making this up. He was born in California, played high school football in Texas, played college football in Georgia, and then when he was drafted by the Detroit Lions, if you watch that E60 that ESPN made on Stafford years and years ago, when he was first drafted by the Detroit Lions, he landed in Detroit, went off the plane, stepped into snow, and he made it a point to say, what am I doing here? I'm, I'm stepping in snow. I don't like this. So he hates cold weather. Not a guy for, uh, or not a place for St- uh, Stafford to be is a cold weather environment. But also New England was not the place because Matt Patricia came to New England and was hired after he was fired by the Detroit Lions. And according to multiple sources, including his former teammates like TJ Lang, they've come out and said that Stafford, his energy was just drained being a part of Matt Patricia's team. He was just a different guy, different leader, just did not uh, seem to find the same amount of joy that he had, and Stafford did not want to be a part of that environment, which makes a lot of sense. Let's talk a little bit about Jared Goff and his uh, new team, the Detroit Lions. First, leaving the LA Rams, this kind of came out of nowhere. In the last month or two, it came out that Sean McVay was noncommittal on Jared Goff being the starting quarterback, according to multiple sources, and the Rams were ready to move on. I don't know where that came from. I think Goff is a good quarterback. Can he be a franchise quarterback? I mean, if I had to lean towards a yes or a no, I'm probably leaning towards yes, but I wouldn't be surprised if they were to move on from him in a couple years. But the Rams were not committal. They believe that they can do much more damage with Stafford, and they move on with Jared Goff, who came out and said that the feeling is mutual, that he wants to be with a team that wants him there, and the relationship with the Rams did not end well at all. If you're a Detroit Lions fan, I would be excited. This all started with this new leadership that came in with the general general manager, the new front office, with Dan Campbell now being the head coach. A lot of people are talking about, who the heck is Dan Campbell? If you followed the NFL for five years, you know who Dan Campbell is. Was the interim head coach for the Miami Dolphins when Joe Philbin was fired. Brings a different level of energy just because he is a former player. And you can tell when you watch his press conference and the energy that he had for the Detroit Lions. Brings in uh, a great coaching staff on top of him because the energy that he has uh, in that press conference and how he's uh, a motivator and a player's coach. A lot of different coaches want to coach with them, including Deuce Staley, a favorite to be the Philadelphia Eagles head coach, the running backs coach, who was a former player. People believed and players wanted him to be the head coach of the Philadelphia Eagles, but when that didn't work out with the Philadelphia Eagles, higher brass, I don't know what they're thinking. They did not want Deuce Staley to be the head coach. He requested to be uh, let go of his contract and move on to a different team, and he chose to sign with the Lions because he believes in what Dan Campbell and the head brass in Detroit wants to do within that organization. On top of that, you have two more first-round picks, uh, another third-rounder, and you have potentially what could be your quarterback of the future. I like your options, Detroit. I really do, and I'm excited for the future. Who won this trade between the Rams and the Lions? If I had to choose, I believe it's the Lions that won the trade in the long term, but the Rams wanted to make the trade for the short term. They wanted an, an addition at quarterback and upgrade and Stafford because they believe that they are a Super Bowl contender with that defense. They have that little bit of window still open that they can make it back to the Super Bowl. And they believe that Stafford was the guy to help lead them to the Super Bowl. But for the Lions, as far as the long term goes, listen, if it doesn't work out with Jared Goff, guess what? It's okay. It's perfectly fine because you have two additional first round picks in the next two years, that you can spend on another franchise quarterback. You could also spend one of those, if it works out with Jared Goff, on a receiver for Jared Goff. Devontae Smith is not out of the question this year for the Detroit Lions. You can spend it on some defensive pieces as well. For the Lions, in long term, I love it. I really, really do, and I'm excited for you guys if you're a fan of the Detroit Lions. Short term, Let's see if the Rams can make it to the Super Bowl because if they don't in 2021, that window that they had 
when they last made it to the Super Bowls in 2018, slowly but surely, it's closing. Let's see what's going to happen between those two quarterbacks and those two franchises. But leave your comments down below. Do you feel like that the Lions won this trade? And if so, are you excited for the future for the Detroit Lions and for the Rams, if you're a Rams fan or if you believe that the Rams won this trade? What do you expect out of Matthew Stafford? Do you believe with this offense with Cooper Cup, Robert Woods, uh, Tyler Higby, and, and Cam Akers with the run game that they have, that this offense could be Super Bowl contenders in 2021? Leave your comments down below. But that's all we have for this week's episode of Time to Football. Thank you guys so much for joining us for this Super Bowl edition of T2F. Make sure you guys subscribe to this channel so you can stay up to date when we come out with more videos uh, every single week. We're going to come out with videos throughout the offseason, so make sure you guys uh, subscribe and stay notified when we come out with those videos. And if you guys are listening to us over on the podcast app on iTunes, be sure to subscribe to us on there so you can listen to us on the go. Rate and review, five stars, nothing less. And enjoy the Super Bowl, guys. Who do you guys have? Again, comment. Super Bowl MVP predictions. Patrick Mahomes, Tom Brady, Chiefs, Buccaneers. Who's going to win? We don't know. It's going to be a good game. But other than that, thank you guys so much for watching this episode. Enjoy the game, and I'll see you next time.